Hi guys and welcome to another scale model shed video and this time I'm building Tamiya's 148 fairy swordfish. The Swordfish is one of my favourite aircraft and this kit is classic Tamiya and you just know it's going to go together well. I'm going to build the model with a few extras including Tamiya's own photo etch bracing wire, so here goes. I always cut the parts off the sprue with a pair of good quality sprue cutters. This avoids any unnecessary damage to any delicate plastic parts. Once the initial parts of the cockpit are assembled, I start replacing plastic for photo etch. And I like to use these diamond knife sharpening blocks to clean up the photo etch parts. VMS's Flexi CA glue is used to glue any parts together. These photo etch scissors are useful for any parts that are difficult to file. And once the fuselage halves are cut off the sprue, I test the fit, and pretty inevitably, there's no problems here. All the fuselage and cockpit parts are then primed in Mr. Surface of 1500 black. Before being airbrushed with a mix of one part XF5 green to three parts XF21 sky to one part XF65 field grey. This colour mix is a bit of a faff, so I just made sure that I had all parts ready to go so they could be painted at the same time. Notice here that once the cockpit parts were painted they were given a coat of satin varnish and then super glue was used to glue the remaining parts together. Once complete the cockpit can be positioned and the fuselage halves can be glued together.
The horizontal stabiliser and rudder are a nice snug fit, but for now, to make them easier to paint, the horizontal stabiliser is left off. So as not to disturb any of the delicate features around it, I sand the seam line using a foam back sanding pad locked in a pair of flat nose tweezers. Vallejo's acrylic putty has a precision applicator. This makes it ideal for filling seam lines. To check the seam lines I decant some black primer into my airbrush. And spraying this onto the seam instantly shows up any areas that require extra work. Any damaged panel lines are rescored using a razor saw. PVA glue is applied to temporarily hold the top of the front nose section for painting. The central top wing supports are painted white and they fit underneath this section, meaning it will need to be removed easily later to fit them. Once the holes are drilled in the wing sections, the necessary slots are made for the photo etch wing bracing. And this is done using the supplied photo etch tool. It's a good idea to do lots of dry fitting, especially with a biplane. And the better everything fits, the less trouble you'll have when you come to connect up all the wing sections. When it comes to clean up, whatever tools you're using, try to work through as many sanding grades as possible, getting finer as you go and ideally finishing to a polish, and in this case I used a 4000 polishing pad.
The wings are going to be painted separately before they're glued onto the model, but I do start by gluing together the entire top wing plane. And then before painting all the clear sections are masked, and for this I use masking fluid. I also use masking fluid to mask the inside of the front windshield. This will prevent any paint overspray getting onto the clear plastic and it's easily removable later due to the open cockpit. And once all the cockpit sections are protected, all the parts are assembled ready for painting. So now on to priming, and for parts of the aircraft that are going to be painted in white, I'm going to use Mr Finishing Surface of White with the tiniest bit of black in it just to make it an off-white. And this will allow me to see better when I'm applying the top coat. And before priming I clean all surfaces with some isopropyl alcohol. I then move to the parts of the model that are going to be painted in the camouflage. And for this I add some more black to the mix to create a darker grey primer. I also use this dark grey primer to do some pre-shading around the panel lines. And I only do this around parts of the aircraft that are made of aluminium such as the engine cowlings. Now the whole fuselage is going to be painted white, so in order to create some colour variation between the fabric parts and the aluminium parts, I first pre-colour the fabric sections using Tamiya Deck Tan. I then lightly build up layers of white until I'm happy with the contrast. So now onto the top surface camouflage and I start by spraying Tamiya XF13. And this is a darker of two greens I'm going to use for this part of the camouflage. I then move to XF89 which is the colour I want to be most prominent. I then gradually build up mottled layers of this green, creating nice variations in shade. So moving on to the grey violet I create a similar effect but using the grey primer as the first colour.
I paint the anti-glare matte black on the front nose section. To start weathering the camouflage sections, I spray all parts with two coats of AK Warn Effects. Once this is dry, I take an airbrush stencil and mottle over a very pale grey. Applying water allows me to work off this grey, creating an initial worn paint and salt staining effect. But I'm going to elaborate on this in later weathering stages. And any parts you're not happy with, you can clean up by reapplying the base colours. MIG anti-slip paste is used for the treadways on the inner wing roots. This is applied and then the texture is stippled into it using a filbert type brush. Once dry, all the paint is then sealed in with Mr. Colour GX100. And I first mist the light tack coat before applying a heavier drop coat. I forgot to apply the camouflage colour to the end of the wing roots, but this is now applied with a brush. So moving on to the decals, and I think I did these in the middle of the night when I was half asleep. Because as you can see, I've used Microsol and Microset in the wrong order, and I didn't even notice until watching back this video. But luckily enough, in my half asleep state, they went down okay. Then once given overnight to dry, I carefully matte the surface with a fine grade finishing pad. And once the decals are finished, I spray the whole model with a matte varnish. And then finally, with no more spraying to do, I can remove all the masking.
I use a cocktail stick to do any cleaning up around the canopy frames. So now on to weathering, and I want to make the top surfaces of this naval aircraft look like they've had a hard time with salt water. So I'm going to use snow white and neutral grey oils thinned with Uptie Lung's matte effect thinner. I start by applying neat unthinned oil, and this roughs out the position of the worst of the weathering. And then using a brush soaked in thinners, I start to blend out the oils and move them into position. In the reverse manner, drying the brush off will effectively soak up the oils, allowing you to add and delete the effect at will. Once the thinners has completely evaporated off, the full effect of the white oils can be seen. This can then be fine tuned and blended using a cotton bud. For the undersides I move to a different colour and I create a grimy effect on the white using a buff. And again the industrial earth is used around the wing fold lines. Here the effect of paint abrasion is applied using Mr. Colour number 8 that's almost dry on the end of a fine tip brush. For the panel lines I use some storm grey panel line wash from MIG. This isn't too dark and it won't stand out unrealistically when dry. Some general staining around the fuselage is applied using smoke and engine grease oils.
and again salt damage is created on the top of the fuselage using white. You can apply air through an airbrush to speed up the drying time of the thinners. This can also sometimes help to enhance a desired effect. Because we only glued this part on with PVA glue, it can now be easily removed. And the central top wing support, which is painted white, can be fitted separately. And a dry fit of the top wing shows that everything will fit correctly. So now onto the exhaust and I'm going to swap the kit one for this one from Quick Boost. After priming in black the exhaust is first painted with X31 Titan Gold. This gold was also applied with a brush around the edge of the front cowling. The rim around the front cowling of the aircraft is painted in 5 parts metallic grey to 1 part flat red. And then more red was added to this mix and the resulting slightly more bronzy colour was blended around the exhaust outlet and out onto the exhaust. and then a very thin down copper wash was applied to the back end of the exhaust. Then once finished the whole effect was unified and toned down using a black oil wash. Now the photo etch wing bracing and the dreaded part of fitting the top and bottom wings together. So this stuff certainly isn't the easiest thing to fit, but taking your time and making sure that the super glue is fully cured before moving on to the next step will certainly help matters.
It's a good idea before connecting the two halves of the wings together to make sure that the holes we made earlier to accept these wing bracings are plenty big enough for them to easily slot into. And again it's a good idea to make sure that the super glue on one end is completely cured before trying to connect the other. So I've got some plans to display this aircraft in flight so I wanted to fit the crew. So a common technique with figures is to first prime them in black and then spray them with white from the top which will give you highlights and shadows with minimal effort. I then use heavily thinned acrylics to build up the colours in multiple layers. Once finished I give them a coat of matte varnish and use a sepia oil wash to pick out more detail. Here paint is being removed from the gluing surfaces before the engine and front cowling assembly is glued into position. The whole wing assembly was then connected to the fuselage. During this process the model surprisingly only incurred minor damage with just a couple of the wing bracings popping out of position.
I then moved on to the photo etch for the under wing ordnance. Once assembled, these were then primed in black. The underside of the model is then weathered using a combination of buff, sepia and smoke oils, up tilings, matte effect thinner and pigments. After being painted in X18 semi-gloss black, the tips of the prop are painted white before they are airbrushed in yellow. The undercarriage largely determines the position of the exhaust, so it's worth fitting the exhaust last. Pretty inevitably, I snapped off the tailwheel. So I pinned it by drilling through with a micro drill and then sacrificing that micro drill to make a pin. And don't worry, I didn't actually cut it with these cutters, I just used them to snap it.
I use Rainmark effects to add some patina to the tyres. Oh, for On the propeller I also use Rainmark effects that are nearly dry on a sponge. Before also sponging with some matte black. There were no holes in the centre wings bar for this antenna, so I cut the pins off and glued this using MIG Ultra glue. And using this glue ensured that if I did have trouble positioning it, I wouldn't damage any of the surrounding paintwork like I would if I used CA glue. And these last few steps see the model finished. Please feel free to leave your comments below, give the video a like and it'd be great if you subscribe to the channel. And you've probably noticed I haven't fitted the torpedo to the model and that's because I got a plan to have the swordfish flying over a modelled sea base dropping it. And if I can work out how to realistically model a sea which I've never done before I'll bring you that video soon. But until then, happy modelling and I'll see you next time.